All right. Hey, everybody. Michael Batista from the uh, Elk Calling Academy. Uh, bear with me tonight. A little under the weather, but uh, show must go on. So, <coughs> excuse me. We're going to talk about uh, a couple of different things. Um, was asked to talk about the wind and also um, call care read care. So, so let's kind of talk about read care first. So there's, there's a few things that um, really eat the latex on a diaphragm read and that's heat, sunlight, and then the acids in our saliva. So, you know, how can we kind of help our reads last a little bit longer. Well, one thing is, you know, the acids in our saliva is really going to start breaking down that latex. So, you know, if you call on a read and you're not going to call on it for a little while, rinse it off with some cool tap water, let it dry out, and then store it in a cool, dark place. Um, you know, the, the butter dish in your refrigerator is a great place to, you know, put your read. Uh, it's cool. It's dark. Uh, you don't have to worry about heat or anything like that. Now, I know a lot of times we're practicing when we're in our vehicles, driving to work or from work or driving, and that's great. The worst thing you can do is take that diaphragm read and throw it up on the dash of your truck and let that sunlight hammer on that latex. I mean, that's, that's just going to break that latex down really quick. And I know some guys are like, oh, I just throw it in the center console, but their windows are up and it just acts as an oven in there. And that heat will actually kind of deteriorate and break down that latex as well. So if you can, if you practice in your rig, um, you know, take the reeds with you when you go into the building, throw them in your pocket, um, you know, little, little call cases. Um, you know, this is, this is a little call case from Rocky Mountain Hunting Calls. It's just a pinch type. Um, bendable products actually just came out with a couple of really, really nice, um, two different styles of reed pouches or call pouches. One of them is a pouch style, kind of similar to that, uh, but it has some webbing mesh on the, on the back of it. So air can really get to those reeds and, and let them dry out. The other actually is kind of cool. It has four slots for four different diaphragms with a magnetic pouch, uh, or a magnetic flap over the top of it. Um, you know, both those options come on lanyards to hang around your neck. Um, the little squeeze pouch actually comes with a Velcro strip also. So you can attach it onto uh, the shoulder strap of your pack or your bino harness, you know, find a different place to attach it. And I'm sure you can almost figure up that same system. I was hoping they were going to be here today, uh, but tracking shows that they're not going to be here until tomorrow. So um this weekend, if I'm filling up to it, I will uh, run up and, and film a review on that so you guys can really see uh, how those work. Now, one thing, guys, <clears throat> and I've seen this a ton, this little plastic pouch that reads come in, as soon as you take your read out of that, throw that away. One of the worst things you can do is call on a read and then put it back in that plastic pouch. Um, you know, that moisture doesn't have a chance to escape. It just stays in there. And believe it or not, your reed sitting in there will grow mold um, within a couple of days. So uh, definitely, as soon as you take it out of that plastic pouch, just throw it away. Now, uh, you know, another thing that I get hit with all the time is open read cow calls. And, you know, we've all had it where we've been using an open read cow call and it sticks. It's just nature of the beast. Now there's a couple of things that you can do is one thing that I've done in the past is I've taken a little paper towel, sprayed a little bit of Pam cooking spray, and then put that paper towel up underneath the reed and then wipe just a little bit of that Pam cooking spray on that shelf. You don't need very much at all, uh, but that will really help that reed from, from sticking. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to completely eliminate it from skip, from sticking, but it's definitely going to reduce it down. I mean, you're still getting moisture and condensation underneath there. Another thing you guys might want to take a look at is uh, last Friday, um, we did a review on the heritage line from native by Carlton. And one thing I forgot to mention is their tone board is actually textured. Now, the nice thing is, is because that's textured, it doesn't have that smooth and smooth surface for that reed to stick. And at the end of this video, I'll go ahead and, and throw. If you take care of your reeds, 
keep them out of direct sunlight. Like I said, if, if, if you're not going to call on them for a little bit, rinse them off. If you do those things, the longevity of the reeds will actually last and keep them, keep them away from the heat in, in your vehicles. So, all right, let's transition over to wind. Um, you know, in, in, in elk hunting, wind is your best friend or it's your biggest enemy. So depending on how you use that wind will determine whether it's your friend or your enemy. Um, wind checkers. I, I go through four or five wind checkers a season. I am constantly checking the wind as I'm moving because, you know, mountain thermals, you know, they can change. So typically mountain thermals in the morning and the evening blowing downhill. And then as the sun, you know, rises and the heat of the day comes up and the ground temperature starts rising, those thermals turn and go uphill. So the one thing then, and that's why we always say you want to be on that same level with the elk or slightly above or slightly below, depending on which way the thermals are blowing, but you have to constantly be checking the wind. Um, you know, as you're moving to the elk, as you're set up and you're working the elk, uh, you know, constantly checking that wind because you may have to adjust, um, you know, what you're doing and where that collar is to, you know, pull that bull by the shooter on the upwind side. If you're by yourself and calling, you need to know which way you need to move after you make a sound so that way that wind is in your favor. Um, now I know we get into areas where the wind swirls. Unfortunately, it seems like a lot of times <clears throat> that's where we run into elk. Um, but really if you're in an area where the wind swirls and you're checking the wind quite a bit, you will find somewhat of a constant wind. And the thing to remember in those swirling areas where you're standing at the winds going one direction, you know, you walk 50 yards, it's going another direction. You walk another 50 yards, it's going another direction. Um, so, you know, swirling winds is, is a tough, tough spot to hunt, but it can be done. Um, you know, you kind of find an area where there's a little more consistent wind where it's really not swirling quite a bit. And, you know, your other option is just kind of go quiet, see if you can move to another setup location, follow that bull, engage him in an in a area where the winds are a little bit better. But unfortunately, sometimes we just get caught in those situations where um, the winds swirl and, and we just kind of have to deal with it. And like I said, if you if you check the wind quite a bit, you know, you check it multiple times, you're going to find a fairly consistent wind. And what I mean by that is you might check it, you know, seven times and you might find it going consistently one direction four, but the other three times it was three different directions. Well, that one direction on the four, you're going to run your setup based on that kind of consistent wind. But ultimately your best choice is if you can move and re-engage that bull in another place. So, all right, guys, cause I am kind of down uh, under the weather. I am going to kind of cut this one short tonight. Uh, coming up this Friday, we have a review of the Smith Game Calls new reads that they just launched for 2018. So that'll go live on our YouTube channel here um, Friday night. Um, next week, you know, we'll do Boppity Wednesday Q&A, hopefully back to kind of the land of the living and feeling a little better. Um, and also uh, get a review of um, those new call pouches from Bendable Products. So, all right, guys, thanks for tuning in tonight. I really do appreciate, uh, you know, your guys' support. Um, as always, keep calling, keep practicing, but most importantly, you know, have fun with this, guys. And we'll see you next week on the next episode of Wapiti Wednesday Q&A. Have a great night, guys.